So in today's video, we're gonna do a penetration test with the DJI Avada. We're gonna use the goggles version two as well as the goggles two. And we're gonna use the motion controller and the FPV controller. The one we're gonna start with is the Avada and the goggles two and the motion controller, which will be the fly smart combo if you're gonna get that. And then we're gonna get over to the uh, pro view combo uh, later. And we're gonna test these in CE and FCC mode. So on this SD card here, I have the FCC mode. And the way that this works is basically that you plug that SD card into your goggles and let it sit for a bit and then it will update and you will have the FCC hack on your goggles, the controller you're using and also the Avada. And you will be able to see a few more channels once we get into the transmission settings and then over to the manual uh, mode or the manual setting of the uh, channel selection. So we're going to go through that a little bit later so I can show you exactly how that works. But we're going to start with the version 2 goggles. See first everything is put into CE mode now everything has been reset so we're going to do a very thorough test here it's going to be behind some trees which is right over here which is about 50 meters away I guess and um, then later we're going to take it deep over the cliff here and through some trees and this is a deep test so if we have good results here you shouldn't have any issues basically when you are flying your normal style so this is a hill and i'm standing at the bottom of the hill and we're going to go all the way over the hill and over to the other side and i have a full tree line in front of me which definitely going to impact the signal or that's what i'm guessing but i think we're going to start with the goggles version 2 now and see how the ce mode works here in europe uh, with the version 2 goggles before we take it over to the FCC hack. And if you're using an Apple Watch or any type of smartwatches, it's also important to remove this before your flight because it's definitely giving you an additional unnecessary interference. 3.8 meters away and it already dropped in the megabits per second. Okay, so anyway, let's uh, go for it. Uh, go through this, still 50, it's good. 40, 48, 33. Let's see how it goes behind in here between these, still 50, good, good. 25, that's, uh, yeah, 25. Okay, let's take it a step further here. Let's go through the tree line. Let's go a little bit higher as well. The rain is starting to pick up as well, I guess. No, we can handle it. Okay, so 40, 45, still 45, 43, 38, 40, and we're now like 100 meters away. I would say it's, it's decent. Now it's starting to get grainy on the edges here. Seven, five megabits per second. Yeah, so 158 meters. Okay, 183 meters. We got down to two megabits per second. And this is actually quite, you know, it's a deep test. If you take a if you fly a little bit higher here, I'm standing down here, like straight forward now on the bottom of this hill. And it has to penetrate all of these trees and the rocks and everything because the signal you know it doesn't look for the drone it's going to go in a straight line towards the drone so it has to penetrate all of this and that's actually pretty decent if you ask me when it comes to the ce mode so now changing over to the fpv controller still have the goggles version 2 ce mode and uh, let's see if this does any better than the motion controller <laughs> And I'm also standing in the exact same direction. I'm not turning around or anything like that. I'm just standing in the same exact same position. We're now down to 30, 29. Just around this, these trees here. Okay, so pretty much the same as the motion controller. Like I said, this, uh, this is a hill and I'm standing at the bottom of the hill and I'm going all, all the way to the top and then over the hill down on the other side. So the, the drone actually has to penetrate everything in between here. And I'm standing exactly in the center right there. So it has to penetrate 
like the trees, the, the rocks, the mountain, everything, uh, which is pretty, pretty hard test. You wouldn't fly it like this, I assume. Um, but this is to see how much of an impact the FCC might have on the on the drone here in CE or in Europe and if you should actually consider getting the FCC hack. A little bit further here we are down to 16 megabits per second. I think that was about the same as the motion controller and getting closer to 150 meters and we're now at uh, 9, 7 megabits, 5 megabits per second. So 170 180 meters and five megabits. So this is not flyable at all. This is not flyable. Transmission signal, gonna get it up here. One megabit per second at 185 meters. And as long as you get like below 10 megabits per second, in my opinion, and that's my opinion, I, I'm, I don't think it's flyable at all. You, you would at least have 20 for for you to be safe when you're flying i'm in the center of the screen exactly right down there and it has to penetrate through all of this and we have 17 16 17 megabits per second now so it's actually pretty decent for a ce model if you ask me okay so the motion controller and the fpv controller both had somewhat the same signal strength. I did the same route between those trees here, which was, you know, it's 50 meters away. I actually dropped down to 10 megabits per second using the motion controller. Not sure why it was the same. The next flight, I, you know, it was the same as now. I still had 50, it dropped down to uh, like, like 39. So it's a little bit strange. Maybe it's because it's not really 100% reliable when it comes to penetrations with the CE model. Not sure at all. So now I place the original antennas here on the goggles version 2 which comes with the fly smart combo. Uh, let's see if these or if there is any actual difference between these and the omnidirectional antennas that I have from True RC. These are more directional so maybe we'll get a better result maybe not. So let's just see how the penetration of of these antennas are compared to the omnidirectional antennas okay let's hit record well, let's go so again i'm gonna stand the exact same way as before so 48 44 43 there is actually a little bit of difference just like 50 60 meters away behind these trees. I had more megabits per second with the omnidirectional antennas from TrueRC. Oh, 30 megabits per second. Six, oh, 200 meters. And the megabits actually feels like it's a little bit stronger than the omnidirectional antennas. Interesting. Okay, so now we're actually quite low here to the ground and it has to penetrate through all of this straight down there. 60 megabits per second, CE model feel a little bit of difference between the omnidirectional and the uh, original antennas here. The original has, is actually a little bit, a tiny bit better than the omnidirectional antennas. I'm really, really surprised. So we now have the goggles 2 connected to the Avada here as well as the motion controller. So just going to turn everything on and we will see how this goes in comparison with the goggles version 2. So first motion controller, then FPV controller, and see if there is any massive differences between the goggles version 2 and the brand new goggles 2. Let's first see if everything is in uh, CE uh, mode here. So I'm gonna hit record and let's go over to transmission. And if we only see one channel here under the 40 megahertz, we are in CE mode. So yeah, we only have one channel here. That means the goggles are now in CE mode. All right. 
So it's going to be the same exact route here and see that the rain is picking up again. But pay attention to the 50 megabits or the megabits uh, per second down there to the right. We are still now at 50 with the new goggles and at this point the other goggles version 2 dropped to about 48 or 47 and we also had a significant drop down around here to about 30 and now we are still at 43 50 still at 50 megabits per second which is pretty good so we're still in 50 and we're now behind the trees if we turn this around i am standing right there at the edge and it's penetrating these trees here pretty well actually 20 15 13 megabits per second and we're at 118 meters let's go a little bit further here and we can also dip down a little bit in between these trees here just to see how that penetration is so 145 146 meters and we see the megabits now is a two and the hd signal is at one it's penetrating through all of this and it's actually a quite heavy test for the uh, the goggles and if we just go over here a little bit um, further behind me we can also see the megabits per second is dropping here we now have five and we're at 175 meters but as soon as we go a little bit higher here we can see that the signal kicks in and we now have 25 20 30 megabits per second ish and i'm still standing there so it still needs to penetrate a lot of things for me to or for the the signal to come to the avada i'm on ground level by the way so it has to go all the way up here and then behind all of those trees and that's actually pretty okay for ce i hope and expect the fcc to be much better to be honest so we now have the FPV controller connected to the Avara. It's still in CE mode. So let's see if this does any better than the motion controller or if we see the same result. All right, let's go. So we actually have a better signal here with the FPV controller over the motion controller and we're here stuck at 50 megabits per second which is um, expected if you ask me and uh, no issues so far still in CE mode. I don't know if it was here or maybe it was here that we pulled it down to check the uh, signal i think it was here so we're now at 50 156 meters and the signal is uh, eight megabits per second for this penetration it's the exact same as the motion controller no difference there ce version motion controller and the goggles and the uh, fpv controller has the same penetration uh, basically uh, so the exact same spot, exact same result. I think we're gonna just move over to the FCC now. So 154 meters CE and the signal was uh, lost or almost lost once we dropped the drone a little bit lower down. I recommend that you turn everything off and then once everything is turned off, you can put the uh, micro SD card into the goggles here. And like I showed you earlier, it was placed in um, C mode. We only had one channel in the 40 megahertz uh, channel selection. So now we should be able to see three channels in the same 40 megahertz selection. And if we now go over to transmission and over to channel mode, and put this to manual we are now seeing three channels in the 40 megahertz bandwidth here which means we're now in fcc mode so a little bit faster now i feel more confident we are in fcc mode it is awesome i shouldn't be dropping anything at this point going around here well exactly the same as the ce mode actually we're still gonna fly the same route though just to keep everything equal so again i'm facing the other way i'm not facing towards the uh, the avada here at all i'm facing to where the avada is to my right 
all right all right so this is where we started to see the drop down to 40 something yeah getting it here as well with the fcc mode and we have 15 11 and we are going a little bit down here so five four so there's no significant improvement right here compared to the ce mode it's actually quite similar even though i'm getting getting further away and the megabits per second is increasing i still have to or the the signal still has to penetrate through all of this so if i turn around now you can see the h there on the screen uh right in the center right there is where i'm standing so it has a lot to penetrate and we still have 12 10 megabits per second which is pretty pretty good actually so 237 meters motion controller is ready let's uh, see if the result is the same as the fpv controller or worse or better let's find out so flying the same route with the motion controller in FCC mode, I didn't really notice any huge differences in the transmission signal. Although it felt like the motion controller had a stronger mid-range signal over the FPV controller. Overall, both of the controllers did pretty good. So we just finished with the motion controller. We're going to connect the goggles version 2 now in FCC mode and do the exact same flight. But if you notice the increase in megabits per second inside that same you know slope it was basically because i was first standing like this then i faced towards the avada and the signal increased by at least 10 megabits so it's important to know that you should always face your drone because it's going to be much easier for yourself and you're also going to maintain a stronger signal so if you know the direction you're standing and know the direction you're flying make sure to turn with the drone as well and if you need to you can change it to normal mode or sports mode and then you can just um, make it hover a little bit and then you can orient yourself towards the avada and then go back to manual mode if you're flying manual mode so really good thing to do is to always pace your drone for this test i wanted to see how it is when when flying behind us and uh, and all that now let's um put these into uh, FCC mode, do the same flight with the motion controller and the FPV controller. Let's see if we have a better signal. Just gonna go with the normal antennas here, which also seem to be a little bit better. So having placed the goggles version 2 in FCC mode, going for the first test at 60 meters, I was quite disappointed. I was actually expecting this to stay at 50 megabits per second, or at least pretty close. Now making the first turn here, the bitrate decreased to 32.5, which was 10.5 less than the goggles 2 in CE mode using the same motion controller. But I did see an improvement of 4.1 megabits per second over the CE mode, which was 28.4 megabits at the exact same location. Now following the same route as before, the bitrate dropped to about 33 at 100 meters, which was slightly less than the CE mode. But once I got to 150 plus meters, I could see the benefits of the FCC mode. And at 180 meters, the bitrate in FCC was 10.6 compared to 2.7 in the CE mode. And flying around at a lower height, the signal was definitely more stable using the FCC hack. But the big question is also the goggles version 2 versus the goggles 2, which we will come to in a second. Now doing the same flight with the FPV controller, I saw an overall increase in bitrate throughout the test. At the 60 meters mark, I saw an increase of 4.6 megabits over the motion controller and at 100 meters, an increase of 3 megabits per second and 150 meters, an increase of 6 megabits per second. But if we take a look at the two goggles, the goggles 2 has an overall better performance than the goggles version 2, especially at close penetrations. At the 60 meters mark, the goggles 2 has an average of 7 megabits per second more than the version 2 goggles. Even in CE mode, the signal is significantly stronger on the goggles 2 over the goggles version 2 placed in FCC mode. 
As we can see here, the benefits of the FCC mode kicks in at 150 plus meters, where we get an average of 6 megabits per second better signal. Moving over to the FPV controller, we can also see the increase in bitrate using the FCC hack over the CE mode. The average is about the same as with the motion controller, with an average of 6 megabits improvement. But if we compare them all, both the controllers as well as the FCC and CE mode, we can here see the stronger signal is given when using the FPV controller in FCC mode over the weakest signal coming from the motion controller in CE mode. Now, moving over to the brand new goggles too. So here using the motion controller in both CE and FCC mode, and the difference between the two is minimal. There's a slight increase of 5 megabits per second at 150 meters, but this evens out at around 170 to 200 meters, so it's pretty equal. Now including the FPV controller as well, we can see the stronger signal is coming from the FCC mode with the FPV controller, which also had a pretty stable signal throughout the entire flight, both the test and when I was doing some manual flying. The weakest signal is again coming from the motion controller in CE mode, but compared to the motion controller in FCC mode, it's actually not that bad. And the FPV controller in CE mode is also pretty impressive considering the test we just did. But how is it with the Goggles 2 versus the Goggles version 2? In CE mode, the new Goggles 2 have a slight improvement over the version 2 Goggles and has a 3.6 megabits better signal at 180 plus meters. But from what I've seen throughout the test and from the flights I've been doing in different areas, these are almost even and you won't notice any difference in CE mode at all. The only difference will be the better image with the OLED screen in the Goggles 2. But if we move over to the FCC mode, we see a bigger improvement in the version 2 goggles over the goggles 2. So this was a pretty hard test on the signal, going as low as possible just to see how far I could push it at 150 meters. I've also done a line of sight test here in Norway where I flew the DJI Avada 3 kilometers. And from the testing I've done so far, I can't really see a huge issue with the penetration. It's not as good as other custom FPV drones and it will never be. Now with that said, I haven't experienced any significant signal issues with the Avara. It was the first time I used the FCC hack when making this video and I've been flying all over in C mode prior to this. Climbing and surfing mountains at a distance of 500 to 700 meters without any problems. It is interesting though, so I will take this to one of my favorite places and see if there is some actual improvements to the FCC mode. But for the Goggles 2 versus the Goggles V2, it's more or less a give or take here in Europe. Do you want to have the clearer image with the OLED screen and the easier to navigate touchpad with the Goggles 2? Or do you want to save some bucks and go for the V2 Goggles where you also can experience with some different antennas? I'll be sticking with the goggles too as I often get as close as possible to the area I want to fly and the signal is apparently better at the close distance. So there you have the CE versus FCC mode here in Europe. Is it worth getting the FCC hack or should you just fly in CE mode? I'll leave the download link to the FCC hack down in the description just in case you want to test it out. And if you want to reset everything back to CE mode, the only thing you do is to take out the SD card and then reset the goggles and you are done. So that's everything for today guys, I hope you found some value in today's video and if you did, consider subscribing for more videos. Also hit that like button for the algorithm, that would be really appreciated. So until next time, take care and I will see you soon.